Hello and welcome back in this in this special requested video. I know some of you would say that all my videos are special. Yes, they are special because they are so, uh, like 98% of them are requested, which it's it's which, which is awesome. All right, so I received this cool requested video by Mr. Eduardo Estibian, Estibian, or um, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing it. Uh, not cor not correctly, Eduardo Estebian. I'm gonna call you, Mister. All right. So he requested a, a 2.8 liter straight six or an inline six, uh, you know, a cylinder engine. It's an awesome request because hypercars are usually made from V8s, V12s, or even from uh, electric motors. But today we will make one out of a 2.8 liter turbocharged inline six engine. So as you can see. It's yellow, it's looking like a race car and it, it sure has a lot of features like a race car but, but it's a it's a hyper car that, that you can drive every day on the streets. So as you can see I've started with a panels panel material with which is from carbon fiber, monocoque chassis, carbon fiber chassis material, mid longitudinal engine placement. So yes, it's a mid-engine hypercar. Uh, push rods in front, push rods in the rear plus 5 quality on the chassis and on the suspension designs this is the engine that I made it's an inline 6 engine from magnesium made from magnesium 92.6 uh, mm on the bore and 69.4 mm on the stroke which equals 2806 cc or you can say 2.8 liter inline 6 turbo engine dual overhead camshafts with 5 valves per cylinder because uh, it's a racing or it's a hyper car engine it needs to have the maximum amount of airflow and the maximum amount of power moving on as you can see I'm using billet, st billet steel crankshaft I actually if I'm, I'm wondering right now I think I should switch to I can switch to regular cast actually I'm gonna use, use Forged and switch to lightweight forged here and lightweight. Okay, so it's better now and it's and it's cheaper as well. Okay, so forged steel crankshaft with lightweight forged connecting rods and lightweight forged pistons. Plus five quality here. Should I keep it on plus five quality? Yes, the customers like it like this. 10.3 to 1 is the compression ratio with 100 on the cam profile, so it's maximum racing camshafts fully onto the max. Variable valve timing technology on all cams, plus 7 quality on the valve on the valve terrain and yes, on the valve terrain and the camshafts. Uh, turbocharged system with a single turbo ball bearing internals. Uh, this intercooler can support 1,182 horsepower with a 70.5 mm on the compressor, 50.0 mm on the turbine, max on 1.40 AR ratio with 13.7 PSI of boost, plus 7 quality here, direct fuel injection, throttle per cylinder or you can say individual throttle bodies, performance intake manifold and intake system, super 98 octane fuel with 13.0 is the air fuel ratio, 94 on the ignition timing which is extremely advanced, 9300 rpm is the limit here plus 7 quality short cast headers single exhaust pipe or I guess this vehicle should have a single exhaust pipe I, I have to modify the fixtures in a moment because I've already put twin exhaust pipe pipes on it right single exhaust pipe bypass valves and I'm using 4.8 inch is the exhaust diameter which is humongous or you can say 121 millimeter which is extremely big as you can see no restrictions whatsoever no catalytic converters no mufflers whatsoever with plus 15 quality exhaust system and this is the final result 649 point uh, so 645.9 horsepower at 8900 rpm and 392.7 pound-feet torque. It's not a torquey engine, but it's a powerful engine, and it's only 2.8 liters, so it's it's small as well. Uh, we're moving on. We have 83.4 is the reliability, which is very very much reliable. 20% or 20.1% of fuel economy, which, which is great for a racing hyper engine that that is not that is not made for eco runs. 20% is still good. 
the engine is smooth even with a racing camshaft, 82 points. It's very responsive, it's noisy of course because it has a big exhaust with no restrictions whatsoever or you can call it straight pipe exhaust system. Uh, the emissions even without a catalytic converter is it's still very low, 220 without any catalytic converters, which is very very good. The engineering time is for, for a hypercar engine. This is nothing. This is like uh, this is like two minutes, two minutes, two minutes job for a hypercar engine. But in a real car engine or in a daily production car, this will take too much. I mean, hypercar engines usually usually take weeks, even sometimes months to be made. But this one only 275.7 hours, which is not that much. Production units still normal for a hypercar engine. Even 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 very extremely easy for them to make. Uh, 157.4 kilograms of weight of total weight, which is lightweight because it's made from forged and magnesium block and aluminium silicon head, so it's still very well, very much lightweight. As you can see, it looks amazing. Look at these uh, look at these beautiful headers or manifold, turbo manifold as you can see, the turbo itself is here, the carbon fiber intake manifold looking absolutely magnificent, these individual throttle bodies, the intercooler, um, this huge intercooler on the, on the front, and the airbox, and that's straight pipe. As you can listen, it sounds even more aggressive at idle. 152 pound feet of torque at idle. That's great. Sounds very much amazing. Now let's move on and put this engine in the in the vehicle. As you can see, I've chosen this 2002 coupe or coupe body. As you can see, it's a mid-engine 2.72 is the wheelbase, good drag, two doors, looks amazing. And this is the color that I've chose. I call it the yum yellow, which is which is which is very yummy actually, and I like it. Some of you would choose red, some of you would choose black, white, whatever, but this yellow is looking absolutely amazing, especially if this was a racing car. I mean, can you imagine the, the sponsorship stickers on it, the numbers, the driver names, the flags on it? It would look amazing. Alright, but this is a hyper car, so yes, you can choose whatever color you want to choose because it's a very custom car. I should also choose the, the same color for the brake calipers so I can make them all right now that's better all right moving on these are the fixtures that I've chosen as you can see uh, these twin headlights in front the logo the front grill the front lip the two vents these side mirrors those vents on the top of the wheel archers these are the wheel archers on, on the top you can call it these door handles this huge yeah, I'm, I'm gonna call it no, it's not an air intake, maybe it's an air intake, I'm not sure, but it's a vent here and I like the shape of it, so I kept it here. And this rear wing here, and these vents on the on the rear here, so can, they can pull the engine. And this rear vent also, so as you can see, the blades are coming this way, so air will go in, and the hot air will exit from here and down here. These 
Oh yes, I remember why I put these in, because the air will go in to cool the brakes and everything in, inside the wheel wheels here and it will, it will go out from these vents. As you can see, aerodynamics are been, you know, they are active, they are not just for showing off. The as you can see the antenna on the roof, it's not it's not necessary, it's an option, you can delete it at the dealership. But I thought at first I really thought that it's looking great because it looks like a racing car with the antenna. You can delete it, it's okay. And this fuel filler cap here. I mean the car is looking amazing. These rims, you already know what kind of rims are these. And yes, the exhaust. Since we have a single exhaust pipe, I'm gonna just join them together like this so you can so they can they can, they can, they can divide the pipe into two exit tips. Right, that, that is, is looking great like this. Because only a single pipe is lo will look hideous, right? Can you imagine a single pipe like this? No, that is, that is not looking sporty. That, that is looking... I can't say the word, but you know what it's look like. So I'm gonna just put two and stick them together like this. So, you know, the pipe will just divide into two exit tips. Now, let's move on. Uh, right, I've chosen rear wheel drive as you can see with dual clutch gearbox, 7, seven ratios or 7 speeds. The, gear, the, the gearbox top speed is 373 km per hour. I've chosen 29 is the spacing, which is, which, which is the best. I've tried a lot of lap times, and by far the quickest lap time on this vehicle. On, on, on the 29 spacing with all, with all the options selected. So this is the perfect spacing I, I, I just came up with this with, with this uh, on this vehicle. I've tried so much lap times and this one was the quickest with this kind of top speed. Electric, electric limited slip differential, plus 10 quality on the gearbox and differentials, radial semi-slick tires with 305 on the front and 345 in the rear. As you can see, the, rim sh the rims are 20 inch, 700 is the tire diameter with 5 offset in the rear and 10 in the front. Carbon fiber rims plus 6, plus 6 quality. Carbon ceramic front, disc with, front discs with 6 pistons. 400mm is the brake rotor or brake disc. In the rear we have carbon ceramics, 4 pistons, 420. I know some of you would say the bigger brakes should be on the front and the smaller in the rear, but also, let me repeat myself, the quickest time and the customers loved it, loved this setup here. Let's see, as you can see, if I start to increase it, the sportiness values and the drivability value will, will drop. The safety will increase, of course, because the brakes will get more stronger, but no, the lap time also will get, uh, will get slower, so 400 is perfect. Also for the for the pad type, 28 is the most optimum, and the brake base, as you can see, if I drop it, the customers will hate it. So the best one is 50-50% on the front and the rear, and this is also the quickest. Uh, they gave the car the quickest time around the test track. Plus one quality here. Downforce under tray was 30 on the downforce. Uh, uh, cooling flaps acting active, active rear wing. 54 on the front wing, 100 on the rear wing, 55 on the engine cooling, 100 on the brake cooling, plus 15 quality on the aerodynamics, two seats, sport interior, no entertainment. Um, I'm not sure, but I think we have to give it entertainment, right? Because it's a hypercar, it's not a racing car. Okay, so since we have a sport, let's give it premium entertainment. Yes, the customers love it as well. And it got extremely heavy. Wow, look at the difference in total weight. Oh, it, it used to be 1,081 kilograms, now 1,178, nearly 100, nearly 100 kilograms of extra weight. And the fuel economy has dropped, the safety has increased, I'm not really sure why. Of course, prestigious point has increased significantly, and the car now is more comfortable to drive, and of course, it's worse on the sportiness value and it's more drivable because it's more fun and more more comfortable. Oof, moving on. Electric viable power steering, electronic stability control, plus launch control. Yes, they love that. Plus one quality, let's make it plus 
plus 5 quality, they like it more like this. Basic tens, I don't want to go heavier because I know that the customers will like it more, but I don't want to go heavier because it will get slower. Progressive springs, less progressive springs, that's what they like. Semi active dampers, active sway bars, and now we have to modify, I think, the suspension a little bit because. Because now we have heavier, you know, now we have heavier stuff in it than it used to be. Right. I don't want to ruin the handling as well, but I want to make it perfect. And I'm going to keep it like this. This way, bars. Yes. Alright, that's better. 5000, alright. So it got... Uh, I mean the customers loved it, and that's what I want. As you can see the ride height uh, is slammed to the ground, 139.3 millimeters. Plus 6 quality on the suspension, or... Yeah, plus 6, so that's... Oh, plus 7. Alright. So as you can see, this, these, these are the... These all this all the, all the options on the vehicle. As you can see, it will cost you with 10% of profits to the company. It will cost you $136,730, which is extremely cheap for a hybrid car. I mean, 91.5% are can can afford it. And as you can see, 118.7 of selling points with a hard shape, so they are loving it. As you can see, track. Track details are, as you can see, the car is, is total weight is 1,186 kilograms. So yes, we gained extra 106 kilograms on the original weight. The weight distribution is 63.7 in the rear, 36.3 in the front. You can tow 2.7 tons behind it. No, you cannot. You cannot put anything in it. Only 75 kilograms. So you can only sit in it. And what else? Let me see. The yes, the downforce is great. Even uh, even in the front, it's looking very little, but it's very effective. Uh, no brake fading. The brakes are working perfectly. The roll angle is extremely little, which is great for a hyper and a racing car at the same time. Yes, 2.9 seconds. Now that got slower. We have to fix it. I need to know. Yes, and the customers suddenly hated it. Ah, yes, yeah, I remember because we have. We have we increased the profits for the company with one percent, ten percent. Sorry. Right. So should I increase it? Yes, I'm gonna decrease it to three sixty-five. Okay, three sixty-five is great. Two point eight. Yes, I want two point eight. All right, let's try it now and see what what does. I I think it it, it got slower. It used to be one one fifty-five point eleven. Let's see now. 156.50 because we added the entertainment system yes the entertainment system and we also what did we do we may we yes and we have changed the gearbox we have we have lowered the final drive so we can make it a little bit quicker because it, it, it got even slower but now now it's a perfect type of car as you can see 356 kilometers per hour, 2.8 seconds from 0 to 100, 10 seconds quarter mile. I mean, yes, it's a hypercar, but it's not like an extremely hypercar. So, I mean, I mean, you can call it a supercar slash hypercar. It's in between. I mean, it has all the components for a hypercar, like carbon fiber chassis, carbon fiber panels, carbon fiber, carbon fiber everything. But it's still it still screams like a supercar mm. as you can see because also in this supercar they, they are loving it 97.5 with a hard shape and 75% can afford it so as you can see it's in between super and hypercar and, and it can do let me show you and it can do 24.1 mpg that's great and the emissions are low it's not really practical it, it has good good utility points. I don't I don't really know why. It's drivable. It's very very sporty and it has good comfort to it. 
it's very prestigious and it has good safety even with basic safety and equipment and it will cost you one hundred and thirty five thousand three hundred dollars that's cheap that is not expensive and it looks great it's it looks really really great now let's go to the test track again so we can fire it up but let me go to the air feed uh, air feed test track and fire it here <laughs> So we did it in 1 minute 10 seconds, um, it's it's a normal time, it's not really quick but it's a normal time, it's a quick time but it's not really impressive, I know that, I know why is that, because of the engine, the engine is too small and, uh, and the power is not really, it's not really impressive, I mean a normal Hellcat will get you 707 horsepower and this one is only 645 horsepower. But this is a requested engine, this is, you know, this is not my idea, and yeah, I'm really happy to do it, and this is the result of it. So, let's, thank you so much, Mr. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Ed Mr. Eduardo Esteban, thank you so much for your cool request, and I'm really happy with the end result here. It's, it's a good car, it's not a bad car, but you can call it a supercar, it's not a hypercar. I mean, calling it a hypercar will, I think, will make us, uh, will make us a laughing stock, because Currently, the hypercars can reach 1000 horsepower, 1500 horsepower, and this one is only 645 horsepower. I mean, normal sedans can, can even push harder than this, but still, it's a cool car. It's a unique idea to get an inline six cylinder engine, inline six one with a turbocharger, but I prefer a V8 in it, or a V12 maybe, or even a V16. It will fit here. It will fit here, I think. Yes, it may fit. And it will work even better than this, and it will make it a true hypercar. So thank you so much Mr. Eduardo, and thank you so much guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button, and let me hear, your, let me see and read your thoughts in the comment section. Share the video if you want to share it, if you are new, new to my channel, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification, notification bell button so you can get a notification when I release a new video. Thank you guys for watching, I'm gonna see you with more cool, with more cool videos because I received of requests and that I'm gonna make very very soon so thank you and goodbye for now my friends